13.5 part 2, now we're going to look at the quotient rule. We looked at the power rule in the last video. So one thing we want to look at real quick is this property of for any non-zero real number, they call it A raised to zero will equal one. So here's some examples. Uh, 60 raised to zero is one. Negative 60 raised to zero is also one. Right here they have negative 60 raised to zero is negative one. And that's because it doesn't have the parentheses. And so what's going on here is it's really negative 1 times 60 raised to the 0 power. That's the same thing as what we have right here. So really that's just a notation issue. So make sure you understand that notation. All right, so looking at these first couple examples, 5 to 0 is 1. Negative 10 to 0 is 1. Right here. This is negative 1 times 5 to the 0 power, so it becomes negative 1 times 1, which is negative 1. Okay? Oop. And then let's look at problem 19 right here. So you've got 7 to the 0, which is 1, plus 9 to the 0, which is 1. Uh, 1 plus 1 is 2. And so that's it for that part. Okay, so... Now we're going to look at negative exponents. Whenever we have a negative exponent, you need to take the reciprocal um, to make that exponent positive. So you can look at these examples. So 3 to the negative 2 power becomes 1 over 3 squared, which then they should go ahead and put it as 1 ninth. Okay. Um, also, if you have a negative exponent on bottom, it can flip up and, you know, you take the reciprocal, so it flips up and the exponent becomes positive also. Okay, so on 21 here, this becomes 1 over 4 to the 3rd. And then go ahead, 4 to the 3rd is um, 64. So 1 over 64. Okay. And so then 25 is basically pretty similar, and you can see some examples a little bit further down this page that look like 25. Um, but basically you're going to take the reciprocal and so it becomes 7 over 6. Now our exponent power is a positive 2. And then kind of like on the previous section where if you were squaring a parentheses, everything receives that power. It's going to be the same thing here. So it becomes 7 squared over 6 squared, 49 over 36. Okay, and like I said, you can kind of see some of these examples down here that kind of go with it. So you can kind of see D is kind of similar to what we just did there, and so is E, and those are in the book. Okay, one more. Um, so the, we got to take care of this negative exponent. So the reciprocal of negative 4 is negative 1 fourth to the third power. So now you're going to square this. So it doesn't matter where the negative goes. I typically like to keep it up top. So it's going to be negative 1 cubed over 4 cubed. Negative 1 cubed is still just negative 1. 4 cubed is 64. So that's the difference between 28 and I think it was 21 up above. You can kind of see the difference. Okay. So... We're going to do a couple more of these. Um, now we're going to look at simplifying these. So if you remember the power rule, if you were uh, multiplying like bases, you added them. Here, if you're dividing them, you subtract them. Um, quotient rule is pretty good, but sometimes I like to look at it a little differently. So look at example A right here. 5 to the 8th over 5 to the 6th, they subtract the bottom exponent from the top one. That's all good. That's fine. Done perfectly well. Uh, just another way to kind of look at this, 5 to the 8th over 5 to the 6th. Uh, we all agree that 5 to the 8th is the same thing as 5 to the 6th, 5 to the 2nd. Then we got a 5 to the 6th still on bottom. And then these cancel out, and it leaves me with the 5 squared, which gives you 25. I don't know, just another way of looking at it. Because if you look at example B over here, when they subtract 9 from 2, they get 
4 to the negative 7th, and then they have to take the reciprocal. Not really a big deal, but the way I like to look at it is that you've got 4 squared over 4 to the 9th. And so this is the same thing as 4 squared over 4 squared times 4 to the 7th. And those that cancels out, which turns into a 1. Be careful. It turns into a 1. This cancels out and turns into a 1. And so you're left with 1 over 1 times 4 to the 7th, which is 1 over 4 to the 7th. So I don't know. That's just another way to look at it besides doing the quotient rule. They're both fine, but just wanted to show you a different way of uh, looking at it. Okay, so let's go ahead and try some of these down here. So right here on 40, if you want to do the quotient rule, that's fine. We can do that, and then we can look at it a little differently if you want. So this is, this would become 4 to the negative 2 minus 3, which then becomes 4 to the negative 5th power, and then last but not least, you have to take the reciprocal to make that exponent positive. And there you go. Okay. So that's one way of looking at it, and that's fine. But another way you could look at it is you could kind of separate these. You could have 4 to the negative 2 times 1 over 4 to the 3rd. And then you take the reciprocal of this, so it becomes 1 over 4 squared times 1 over 4 to the 3rd. And when you multiply them together, you get the same exact answer. I'm not trying to confuse you by showing you multiple ways of doing it. It's just you'll have a better understanding the more kind of ways you can see how these are manipulated. Okay, so same thing on 50. If you want to, just do the quotient rule. A to the 6 minus a negative 4. So now you have double, oh, now you have double negatives. So it's going to be A to the 6 plus 4, which is A to the 10. Okay, or you could basically think of flipping that basically up and it becomes a positive exponent and then you get the same result a to the tenth so okay all right one last page okay so I have these examples here if you want to look at these these do a pretty good job of explaining how to do these problems so if you look at I it kind of goes with 48, basically they split them apart and they take the reciprocal of this and it goes down below and then piece it back together. And that's fine. I mean, basically you can just go directly to that. You can think of this as being over 1. We're going to fix that by flipping it down. So now you've got y to the 4th over x to the 8th done. Okay, they, they showed some good detail there. On 52, I'm going to give this a little bit of some a little bit of space right here. So I'm just kind of breaking these like bases apart so I can kind of investigate each one individually. So if you really want to, you can do the quotient rule like they did on E. If you look on E, they did the quotient rule, and that's perfectly fine. And then they had to fix their negative exponent after applying the quotient rule right here on example E. And that's fine if you want to do it that way. Or you can look at it as that, you know, eight of these cancel out with a to these and leaves you with uh, 3 to the second power on bottom. Okay, you've got y to the fifth over y squared. Well, the y squared, that means you have two y's on bottom. Those two y's cancel out with two of them on top. So now we're left with y to the third over 3 to the second, because all these others reduce down to 1's. So your final answer is y to the third over 9. So two different ways to look at that. You can look at example E. Or you can kind of see what we did on 52, and you can decide what works best for you. Okay. Let's look at um, 56. Now, be careful. This isn't the quotient rule. This is just 10 divided by 2. Okay, so the 2 would reduce to 1. The 10 would reduce to a 5. So don't subtract them. Sometimes we get caught up with the properties of our exponents. And... Um, then you've got four of these cancel out with four of those. So all that's left on bottom is one times one. So we don't even have a fraction anymore. It's just 5p to the fourth. All right. Let's see. 
need to do 58 here. And 58 is really not that bad. Just be careful. A lot of times people think that the the 9 and the R, the negative 3, are actually together. They're not. They're being multiplied together, but they're not actually attached to each other at all. Okay, and so you can look at example C. I mean, that's exactly what we're going to do here. Basically, anything with the negative exponent, it's going to flip sides of the quotient line and become positive. So the only thing that stays put is the 9. So the R goes up top and becomes positive 3. The 9 stays where it's at. Okay, the 9 and the R are not attached. P goes down, becomes positive 5 power. Q goes down, positive 4 power. I know it, I'm trying to make it as simple as possible uh, for you. Um, it can be a little more complex than that um, if you want a better explanation of it. But we can, uh, if you want to after class, we can discuss it more in depth why that property works there. Okay. We have just a few left. Let's see. We got two left. And once again, you can look at these examples they have right here. I'm pretty much going to do it the same way. So power to a power, we need to multiply this exponent by each exponent inside the parentheses. So this becomes q to the 12th because negative 4 times negative 3. Uh, or I'm sorry, p to the 12th. And then q to the negative 3rd r to the positive 9. So now we only have one negative exponent that we need to fix. So we're going to flip it down. The p of the 12th stays there. And now it doesn't matter which one goes first. You can put the r or the q first. It really doesn't matter. So we'll, we'll just keep the r here and the q here. So if you would have put the q to the 3rd in front, it actually doesn't make a difference because multiplication, 2 times 3 is the same thing as uh, 3 times 2. So order doesn't matter. Okay, so that one was like D if you want to look at that example also to have a second look at how to work a problem like that. Okay, um, E. Once again, you can look at E. Well, we're going to work it a similar way. Power to a power, so this becomes M to the negative 14, N to the negative 2, over M to the negative 4, N to the 3rd. Um, so... You can do the quotient rule if you want. Um, they went ahead and fixed their negative exponents. We can do that if you want. It's kind of up to you. So either way is going to work. Um, I'll go ahead. I like to make my exponents positive first. That's just personal preference. So the M shifts up to be a positive 4. Okay. Both of these are going to go down. So we'll put m to the 14th right here. Still have the n cubed there. It just stays put. And then now I'll send the n squareds next to it. And the last thing to do is to simplify. So the n's are going to come together because you've got 3 and 2. So that gives you 5. And then right here, n to the 4th reduces with n, m to the 14th, which becomes m to the 10th. Now be careful. You don't want to forget there's a 1 on top. A lot of times people forget about the 1 still there. So now you've got m to the 10th, n to the 5th when these are brought together. Okay, so hopefully this was really just a review. Especially if you were in 308, then you probably could do all this homework without even the video. But um, anyways, I think the homework's just 12 questions or so. So it shouldn't be too much, shouldn't be uh, too big of a deal. So on Tuesday, we'll start Chapter 17. See you then.